Hey, in this screencast, you're going to learn a really cool feature of CSS Grid called Template Areas, which allows you to change an experiment with layouts much more easily than with the techniques you learned in the previous cast. This feature is ideal for creating prototypes of layouts quickly. We're using more or less the same example from the previous screencast. Our grid has 12 columns and three rows. The columns are just as they were in the previous screencast. However, for the rows, I've changed the second one from 200 pixels to auto. That means it'll take up whatever available space there is left in the height. And combining that with setting the height of the grid container itself to 100%, this will result in the grid being responsive in the height as well. As you can see, if we make it taller, the second row grows with the grid. Now, we're still using the grid column property to adjust the position and size of the items. But what we rather want to do in this screencast is use something called grid area. And to be able to do that, we're going to have to give the container a grid template areas property. And the syntax you're about to see now might seem a bit weird. It'll be a visual representation of the grid. And the way it works is that will create a string for each of the rows. And in those strings, we'll create a cell for each of the columns. So let's add the letter H 12 times in the first string. We have to give it exactly 12 characters as it has to match the amount of columns. So we're not actually defining the columns or rows here. We've already done that up here. We're just naming them so that we can refer to them using these names later on. In the second row, we'll add one M and 11 Cs. Like that. And in the third row, we'll add 12 Fs. And what you have here is a visual representation of how we want our grid to look like. And as you might have understood, the H, M, C, and F refer to header, menu, content, and footer. So now let's remove the old way of positioning the items like that and build up the grid over again. We'll give the header a grid area of H. As you can see, as a result, the header takes up the entire top row just as we've defined here. We'll give the menu a grid area of M, the content a grid area of C, footer a grid area of F. As you can see, our layout is just the way we want it to be, and it's responsive. Now, the reason this technique is brilliant for creating mockups is because you now want to make the menu span all the way to the top, like we did in the previous screencast. We can just replace this age here with an M. And as you can see, automatically the menu popped up to the top. If you want to make it span all the way to the bottom, let's do the same thing here as well. And just as easy as that, we have changed the layout without having to fiddle around with the values in the item classes. You can also use dots, which will result in blank cells like that. There, there, and there. And now we have this weird experimental layout where all the corners are blank. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is that the areas will only be valid if they are rectangled. We try and change this to an F so that the F footer goes like that and then up. You can see it breaks the entire layout. So you have to use rectangles. As you understand, this is a super simple way of experimenting with the layout. So I'd recommend you to play around with these values here so that you make sure that you properly understand it. And once you've done that, you have finished the first section of this course. So congratulations. You now know quite a lot about CSS Grid. However, there's still a lot of stuff to learn. So in the next section, I'm going to teach you some more advanced stuff, and we're going to create even more responsive grids. That'll be super cool. So I'll see you there.